Lastly, we've got our recognition and measurement criteria. All this stuff you should remember from, and I say should, I usually don't like making definitive statements, but if you got the 150 credits, you're sitting for the exam, you likely took you know, your basic financial accounting courses. So you probably have saw this, maybe it was a while, which is totally fine, but this is where this is all from. The accounting assumptions, the monetary unit assumption. This is basically saying we are using some sort of monetary unit, such as a US dollar. Hopefully, maybe we'll be using Bitcoin in the future. Economic entity, right? We're using a company, an LLC. It is an actual economic entity. We can say it's McDonald's US, right? We can say it's an economic entity. Going concern assumption. This one is going to be that the company, unless otherwise stated, is assumed to be not in threat of bankruptcy or shutting down. This is one that's big with audit. Time periodicity. This is going to be just more so in our periods, right? We've got period one, period two. We can't just randomly and arbitrarily report on December 12th, 2020 to you know February 8th, 2021. Like that's just does we need to do real time periods. For the accounting concepts, revenue recognition, and just be familiar with these, right? You don't need to know it word for word, but just be familiar with what these are and be able to describe them to someone. Revenue recognition, revenue is recognized when earned. We've got a whole section on that coming up for you. That is gonna be super important for the exam. The matching principle, you can match different accounts to each other. Not too important, I wouldn't really worry about that one. Full disclosure principle, this is going to be Similar to what we talked about with full disclosure is that you need to report everything, right? Obviously with the constraints, but you need to not withhold any information. As a company, you need to fully disclose and give all the information to the investors and creditors. Historical cost is that we need to value things at their historical cost unless they're at the fair value. So I wouldn't really worry about this one because you need to report things at what makes sense. And there's a whole valuation chapter. That's why this one is good. This whole conceptual framework chapter is good because it's a nice intro to everything that we'll see later on. Now the constraints, the constraints to these concepts and assumptions, what makes these harder? Well, materiality, like we said before, materiality is the concept of, you know, this one's a little bit more important than the others. If we've got, again, a $100 fraud, it's not worth reporting. Or if we can't tie, you know, a two hundred dollar accounts receivable balance, who cares if it's a one hundred billion dollar company? You know, not not important, not material. Conservatism, consistency, wouldn't worry too much. Consistency. This is just what we talked about: the financial statements being able to compare them year to year. They're consistent. Cost benefit. Again, kind of talked about this where. We want to make sure that anything we're taking the time to pay our staff accountants to prepare for the financial statements is worthwhile putting in there. And then objectivity, this is gonna be free from bias again. So you see there's a lot of similarities between these two. Just good overall concepts to be familiar with. I'd expect more so to see questions on this. And by expect, I mean, I have seen more questions on this. Whereas just be familiar generally with these concepts, right? Like you're not gonna necessarily be asked too many direct questions from them, but just nice introduction of what you'll be familiar with on the exam.